Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sibylla. Welcome to Sketching Encounters. Today, I've got Mike Bluler. Um, what an incredible encounter he had. So we're going to just jump right in. Yeah, my name is Michael Bluler. I'm 48 years old. Um, I'm from Biloxi, Mississippi. Uh, Biloxi is just a small little, it's a, it's a, I'm like one mile from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, avid deer hunter, avid prospector, um, 13 and a half years in the uh, U.S. Army, uh, did four tours in Iraqi freedom. Um, just a normal guy, basically, um, you know, for, you know, from about mid October all the way to mid February, I, I pretty much, I'm a hunter. And how was, what was your life like before you had your experience in, to, in 2020? Uh, before I had my experience, my life was, it, it was upside down a little bit. Um, I was, uh, my mother had just passed away and, um, I was going through a very um, rough divorce. Um, I was pretty much to myself. I didn't want to, you know, be around people and stuff like that. That you know, so I stayed in the woods a lot, a lot. Yeah. Before that happened, and um, you know, it, before that happened, you know, I. Um, as far as like you know, Bigfoot or any other cryptid or anything like that um i'm not even sure i believed in that you know um i can remember when i was little you know back in the 70s they used to show the patterson gilman all the time mostly late at night and um yeah it was you know my parents always said that was somebody in a suit you know or, or, it, was, or it was fake I, i'm not sure if i believed it. And it even if i did believe it you know i just thought it was that was a problem out in the northwest you know n n nothing down here like that and uh, boy, was I wrong. I was definitely wrong about that. Yeah. Um, so um, I could get, uh, do you want me to just go ahead and go straight into it? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it was December 16th of 2020. And um, it was the last, it was the last dog season. And when I say, you know, dog season, you're not hunt, hunting dogs. They, they, they use dogs to hunt deer. Yeah. Not a fan of that. Um, tried it a couple of times when I was younger. It's very dangerous. Um, a lot of drinking and a lot of dope smoking and stuff like that. It's just not for me. But um, when that season's in, you can't, you, I'm a still hunter. You know, I, still hunting is basically, you know, you're waiting on a deer or, or some people, um, spot and stock that that's really the, the the real term of still hunting so i wasn't still hunting i was just you know i get up a tree and you know i figure out a pattern for these deer well you can't do that during dog season because there's dogs all in the woods so um i would always get away from my normal area and go to a wma because in a wma they you know they can't do that in there that's it, it's protected there's a lot of game wardens and stuff like that and um I went up to, um, I was going to go to Red Creek w WMA that day. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to go up to a further spot that I know. It's, uh, it's called Leaf River Wildlife Management Area. Went up there, and um, it, it, it was a beautiful day. I can remember. Um, I went. Um, there, there used to be this field. A huge, huge dry grass field. It was probably it, it was straight across from the game warden station. It was it was beautiful. It was huge. It was like 200 yards wide and about a thousand yards long. Just big old thing. And I hunted a, I hunted it a couple of times. I never had any luck. There, there were these power lines that, that ran adjacent to it. You know, they ran uh, north and south. And um, I used to go down these power lines north and I would, I would set up behind that ryegrass field. And, um, it was a good spot because deer in Mississippi are very skittish because, because of the hunting pressure, you know, um, you're not going to, these deer don't come out on fields and stuff like that until it's like pitch black dark because, you know, they know there's nobody in the woods, you know, there's no hunters, you know, they, 
and they're just very nocturnal. So I um I got up this tree, you know, it was like my favorite tree. You know, I hunted this tree for years. Um perfect pine tree. It was it was on the east side of the power line and it was like set up like directly behind that field. And the reason I had luck in that tree is because it was like an ambush. You know, um, right before dark, you would see them crossing the power line and they would get set up to get on that field. And, you know, it was, it was perfect. I mean, it was picture perfect. And one day I was, it was, yeah, it was uh, December the, December 16th of 2020. I'll never forget it. Beautiful day. Got up my tree. I always get up there early, you know, like one o'clock. You know, it's, it's getting pitch black at like 530. And I, um, you know, got my tree and got comfortable. And it was just, it was just right off the bat, about 30 minutes into it, you know, I'm like, something's, something's wrong. You know, it's, it's, it's too quiet. There's like no action, like not a squirrel in a tree, and not a bird chirping, no nothing. I mean, it, usually that place is full of life, you know, a, a place full of hogs, you know, you'd see hogs coming through or, you know, it just, it was just weirdly, strangely quiet. And it was perfect. I had like a perfect wind and just didn't make any sense. Didn't make any sense. So I'm, you know, I'm just thinking maybe it's just one of them days, you know, you just, it's a bad day. Maybe, maybe it's a bad moon phase or, you know, I don't know. Because you do get them days, but it was just in that area. It was just unlikely, you know. I, I, I've been in that tree when it's pouring rain and, and, and seen plenty of action, you know. And it was just it was just strange. So, you know, I just dealt with it, and it got you know waited for a couple hours, and then it got to be about four ten, four fifteen, somewhere around that area. And I, I start getting some action behind me. You know, something's coming in behind me from the east, about about seventy yards. It's and it, whatever it is, it's heavy. You know, it's it's and at this time I'm not paying attention for bipedal or nothing like that. You know, I'm just something is coming. And it had a lot of weight to it because it was breaking sticks when it was walking. And I have to remind your audience, South Mississippi is very, very thick. Like when you're going to your tree stand, you have shrubs and stuff up over your head, you know, just nasty gallberry bushes, briars. It's just very thick. They do a lot of controlled burns in Mississippi, you know, prescribed burns just to kind of help it, you know, keep it down a little bit. That year they didn't burn. But this thing's coming in behind me and I can't really, the tree stand I was in, I can't, I couldn't just turn around like this. You know, you don't, you, you don't want to make any movement. And it's just, it's coming in, but it's like taking its time coming in. But it, whatever it is, it's heavy. I think at this, I'm thinking if it, it's, it's either a big hog or it's a big buck, you know, making its way to the power line. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's fighting its way through the, through, through the shrub just like a person would. So I'm, I'm thinking, what is this behind me, you know? And it, it circles out to the right of me but it only go, gets about 30 yards even with my tree and it stops. And the first thing I can remember is hearing like heavy breathing, like almost like labored breathing, like like, like something that has like a, like a chest cold or something like that. Um, I started thinking, wow, you know, maybe this is something that got shot. And um, maybe, you know, the, the blood's filling up in the lungs, you know, and it's going to sit there and die on the side of me because it was... It, this thing sounded like it was fighting for air. And, it, you know, that went on for about a minute and then everything gets quiet. And I'm like, you know, and I can't, and, and I'm so mad because I can't, you know, I'm, I'm up over this thing and I still cannot see whatever it is. I can't, I couldn't see it. I'm like, well, I guess when I get, you know, when my hunt's over, I guess I'll uh, go over there and see if something died. Um, so, you know, I came to terms with it. So I start facing straight again, you know, I'm kind of still mad about them. I'm like, well, maybe, it, maybe it just slipped out and I didn't hear it. Maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was a big buck and he seen me or smelt me and he just slipped out without me knowing one of them kind of deals. So I came to terms with it. So, um, 
you know, I, I face back west. And it's the time of the day when the sun is right up over the trees and I'm getting blinded. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm like this trying to look down the power lines because the power lines is really the only clear shot I had. You know, to the side of me, you know, behind me and in both ways on the side of me, it's just too thick. It, it was way too thick. So, you know, I'm, I'm fighting. I'm looking. And I finally kept something in my right peripheral, and it's way down there. It's like 150 yards north down the power lines. It's black, and it's on, it's on all fours. And I can't make out what it is. It's 100, you know, right away I said it's a black bear. Because we do have black bear in Mississippi. We don't have like a high abundance, but we do have them. Um, I have caught them on trail cam. They usually have like an orange collar on where the state released it. Oh. But we do have them. That's what I thought it was. And I was like, oh, cool. You know, you know, this is, I've never seen one, you know. I've seen them on trail cam, but I've never seen one in real life. I said, I'm going to look at this. You know, you can't, you can't shoot a bear in Mississippi. You, you, you'll get in a lot of trouble. You might as well, you, you'll get in the same kind of trouble as if you killed a bald eagle, you know. Yeah, it's, it's heavy penalties, probably a little jail time. But, you know, I, in, the, in the way my gun was, I had to, he was to the right of me, so I had to go left-handed, which is unorthodox for me because I'm, you know, actually right-handed. Um, so I tried to put him in the scope left-handed, and I couldn't find him, man. You know, I was going all over the place, and I finally got on him, and this thing now is sitting down. It's sitting down like a person. It looked like a giant, just like a huge giant sitting down. Facing the same way I was facing, but but he's like 150 yards north down the power lines. And I'm like, you know, what is that? And I, I said, that's got to be a bear, you know. Maybe it's just a weird angle, you know. So, you know, I scooted over, and, you know, I went right-handed. And, you know, I jacked my scope up all the way on full power to look at this thing. And the first thing I noticed was the hair. The hair on the back was the very first thing that didn't make any sense to me. It wasn't like what you would think, the, the double undercoat of a bear or dog. It was hair, sure enough hair. And he had like matted up places on his back to where you can see the skin, and the skin was ashy gray. So I went up to the top of his head, and the top of the head, it was, it was conical shape, but it wasn't like pronounced. It wasn't like to a sharp point like a football. I mean, it was there, but it wasn't, it wasn't exaggerated like that, but it was definitely conical shaped. Um, and he was also, with his left hand, he was digging in the dirt. He, he was digging in the dirt, like maybe he was digging for bugs or something. I don't know. It was very, very, very strange to me. And he turned his head to the left just a little bit. And that's when I got to see like a piece, a piece of the eye and a piece of the nose and a piece of the mouth. The nose, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a snout for a bear. I didn't get that. I got, I got like a hooded nose, like up, but much wider, more flared out. Um, and a, a piece of the lip and the eye was like jet black, it looked like a shark's eyes. There, there, there was no white. And I don't know to this day why I did it, but I just freaked out and I yelled at it. Now I said, hey, you know, just hey and when i did that man um like it was it happened so fast it's like he put his hands on the ground and he popped them to two feet like it was nothing like it was nothing then he screams first scream it was very loud um it, it, it was it was more like a shriek i want to say um more more like a roar it, but it, it, it sounded like difference between like I don't know uh, probably like a lion or an elephant or or like being next to a uh, speaker at a concert like like it rattled me from that far away you know I, I can I can feel the vibration off of it it was crazy wow absolutely crazy he starts walking in this oval shape like this 30 40 yard oval shape and he's looking down the power lines he's looking west he's looking back my way and there was a, you know, he did that, and then he kept, he looked my way again, and his eyes got really big. But he didn't look at me, but he just looked my way, and his eyes got big. I don't know if he, maybe he's seen a piece of my tree stand hanging or something, maybe. But 
his eyes got really big and I just, I was freaking out, man. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't stay still, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, just stay like kind of like frozen. I couldn't, you know, I was just kind of all over the place. And he looked up at me and he walked straight to me, straight to me. You know, you see the Patterson Gimlin film, you see the Freeman footage, you know, the, it's always them walking away that, you know, they don't want to be seen. It, it was, it was reverse. He walked straight to me. He starts walking to me and the way he was walking to me was very strange too. the way they walk. Um, it was it they don't they don't walk like we do at all um his knee his his knees never locked out they, 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 it was always like a little slight bend but the but the movement he was making with his arms it was almost like he was on like a elliptical machine or something like that mm-hmm. or, yeah. or 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 snow skis i start seeing that he's walking to me i look down at my gun and i unbolted it just to you know make sure i had one in and I jammed it back shut, and I looked back up, and now he's 35 to 40 yards in front of me from 100 from 150 yards away. In 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 a matter of three or four seconds, five seconds is given a lot. Wow. I don't know what he did during that time. I was looking down. I don't know if he glided. I don't. That's the high, that's some of the high strangeness of this encounter. That that's one of them. He gets to me. And I put him back in the scope, and and, and I'm, I, I can't remember if I, you know, that there's a lot of stuff that probably hasn't come back to me. I'm pretty sure I was cussing and saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm sure all that was going on. Um, but I remember putting him back in the scope, and he was very close, and he looked just like a big black blob in the scope. So I had to power my scope back down. And I put him back in, and that's when I really got the scene. It was crazy. Uh, the face was pronounced black, like but like almost exaggerated black. Like maybe he paint. It was his real skin color, but it was it was so black it looked like he painted his face black. It was blacker than the rest of his body. His eyes and his face. Um, he had a pretty big forehead. He had the uh, he had the pronounced brow ridge. Uh, the nose, the nose was just like ours. Um, that, there was a there, there was there was a lot of human look to this. It, it, it wasn't I wasn't looking at an ape. Mm-hmm. I was looking at at some kind of person. Um, his hands, oh, his hands were big. Um, you, you, have you ever seen the uh, over there in the Himalayas? They got that. Uh, the, well, I think it's a replica now of the, of the Yeti hand. Yes. Yeah, that's that, that that that's that's accurate. That's accurate. The size of the fingers and stuff. The 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 circumference of the fingers were big too, like small little bananas. I can see how these things like do these tree breaks and do all that twist and stuff. They have that kind of power in their hands. So there was a few times, um, and you could see like the emotions in his face, like. It was almost like he didn't know what he was looking at or, or he was interested in what he was looking at. It was, it was, it was very strange. Um, he never bluffed charge or nothing like that. Um, he stayed the whole time about 30 yards away. Um, he never would get any closer, but he, he wasn't going anywhere. And there was a few times when he made like, a weird noise, a, a weird noise, or shuffled a certain way where I would draw down on him. I had him, in, I had the gun on him the whole time. But when I say draw down on him, I'm talking about acting like I'm fixing to shoot him. When I would do that, he would turn his head to the side like this. And one, I, I, I've tried to do this a million times. I can't do it. But one eye was looking on, straight at the ground, and and the other one was looking at me. That I, I've, I've I've tried to do that. I can't do it. Um, but that's what he did. And he was giving me the look like, don't you do it. But like, you're not going to shoot me with that gun. That's, 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 that's the emotion. You know, that, that's what I was getting off of him. Every time I would draw down on him, he would turn his head to the side. And he's like, don't you do it. No, you're not going to do that. Um, a, a lot went on in a very short amount of time. Um, there was there was a point where he did like a 
he could have been, you know, I tell people this all the time. He said he was probably barreling his teeth at you, but to me, it looked more like a yawn. And, you know, I've thought about that yawn and um, primates do that, Mm -hmm. you know, when they're under pressure and they're scared or they'll do like a yawn. And that's what he did. And when he did that, I got to see his teeth. His teeth were, that's, that's why I don't think he was very old. He didn't have any, like, he had nice white teeth. He didn't have, like, bad, decayed teeth. Yeah. When I say young, not juvenile, maybe, like, what we what we would consider a 21 or 22-year-old, mm-hmm. probably in that, probably somewhere, I mean, I don't know how how they age or anything like that, but his teeth were pronounced white. Um, they were square like ours, but much wider, much thicker. White, white chiclets is what it looked like in his mouth. Yeah. Uh, I got to see the inside of his gums. I mean, when he yawned, I mean, it, it, it was really quick. It, it, he didn't just keep his mouth open for me, but, you know, it's, it was really quick, but I got to see all that. And uh, it went on it, it went on for a while, man. It was just basically like a, a staring contest. And it got to, you know, I was thinking to myself, when is this thing going to leave? You know, is, is this thing waiting for it to get dark, you know? So it can do what it wants to do, or you know, is it is, it, is this thing going to climb up the tree, or you know, what, what's it going to do? It's, it's it's just basically staring at me. And he would move around a little bit. There was a dog. There was a dogwood tree that was right there, and he he shuffled over to that dogwood tree, and there was a branch that came out, and he kept moving his head around it. He wasn't ducking. He was just moving his head around it. Very strange. Hmm. I went back probably a little bit over a year after that to go retrieve my stuff. You know, I finally got some people to go with me and I went to that dogwood tree and that, that branch is easy eight foot. Mm-hmm. So he, he was an eight footer or, or more. Yeah. Eight, yeah. He was easy eight foot. Had to be. I would say from the time I first seen him until the time I got out the tree finally, that was probably a good 30 minutes, 25 minutes. Wow. And multiple times you pulled up the, uh, you, you were looking at him through his scope, through your scope. So you could yes. see, you could see real fine detail in his face. Yes. You could see, yes. you could see eyelashes. I can see his eyelashes. That's correct. Did he have any yeah, of the? They, they had, they had, they have eyelashes just like we do, but they were just much longer. Longer, and did yeah, you, you can see... look in the yeah. When I was looking in his face, I, I can see, I can see the pores in his face. I can, I can, I can see all of it. That's why, you know, I, I, there was a lot of human features to it, but I wouldn't say exactly human. I would say more like. He had the high cheekbone that said everything about Native American, but he he had the the, the human looking face, but it, not a more creature, more, more like uh, Neanderthal, mm-hmm. is what I was getting. More caveman looking in the face. Yeah, the head the head was huge. And and another thing I want to tell your audience, you know, a lot of people think that these things don't have a neck. You know, it just looks like a head on top of shoulders. That's because their traps are so big; it, it hides their neck. I mean, he was turning his head to the side and not moving his body, and you have to have a neck to do that. Yeah. They, they, they have a neck. It's just they have so much going on up in their shoulders and stuff. It just kind of like, you know, Eddie Munster yeah. looking, you know? Right. Um, it got to the point to where the sun has not set yet, but it's it's about to. You know, you can see the, the, the sun is down almost on the ground. And, and it's a big orange ball. It's about to set. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, I get to thinking, you know, I have to make a, I have to make a move here. You know, I, I have, this guy's not going anywhere. You know, I was thinking when he first came up, maybe he, he would just eventually just leave, go mm-hmm. away, figure out what I was and just go. Well, he wasn't doing that. He was just sticking around. And, um, you know, I thought about it. I said, I'm, 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 am I going to have to kill this thing? And as close as I was, I'm pretty sure I could have blew his, blew his head to pieces, but I didn't, I'm glad I didn't. Um, 
I put, you know, I finally had enough and I put him back in the scope and I drew down on him again one more time. And he didn't, he didn't turn his head this time. He just looked at me just like some confused kid. Like his eyes got really big, but he didn't turn his head. And I can remember, I didn't put it, I didn't put it right between the eyes. I put it about right here and I went to squeeze off and I, I'm surprised my gun, I, I got so far into that squeeze i'm surprised my gun didn't go off and i got to a point where i free uh, i just froze i couldn't do it couldn't do it i just couldn't do it um i i thought if i if i did that i was killing somebody mm -hmm. like a person this is some this is some kind of people we don't know about this you know and if i if i do this and i get out of here and um, go get authority figures. Am I going to go to prison for the rest of my life? That's that's what was going through my mind. Yeah. And I just took the gun off of him and set it down in my uh, tree stand. And I stood up and I reached my arms out to him. I said, what do you want? When I did that, everything changed. He yelled again. And... Uh, that was that that burns a hole in my memory for the, it will for the rest of my life when it was like a draw up from the from the belly it was like a wind up when he turned it loose his his eyes his nose and his mouth just went to one and just protruded out about 10 or 11 inches and it just looked like a bunch of like flapping meat what it looked like his face distorted like his face it looked like his face just melted there was so much power in that screen and when it hit me it just i can just feel like a bunch of hot air that's what it that's what it felt like a bunch of hot air like i'd tell people like being overseas um when a bomb goes off, okay, it might be a mile away. You know you're okay, but you can still feel the heat off of it. Wow. Feel loud. That's what it was like. Oh. Then his face went back to normal, and he goes back down to all fours and runs across the power lines. And that even looked weird. That didn't look right either. It looked like... Um, have you ever seen like a big dog run, like a Great Dane? You know how it's kind of really lurpy? Yeah. It looked very sloppy the way he was running, but it was super fast, super fast. He gets on the other side of the power lines and he starts grabbing strawberry bushes, bob ripping them out of the ground by the roots and chunking it out in the middle of the power lines. And about every fifteen to twenty seconds, he's doing that. He's doing that same scream. But there was one point I want to say when he got in the woods just a little bit further, he started talking. It was like, it was, it was, it was very strange. It, it was just, it was, it was really fast. It was just like, uh, 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 you know, that, that kind of thing. I, I, I'm not doing it any justice, but it, it, it definitely sounded like speech to me, some kind of speech. And um, yeah, man, he, he gets in the woods and it's, it, it sounds like a bulldozer back there. I mean, he's knocking trees down. He's, he's not like knocking down these huge, 400 year old yellow pines but he's knocking trees down he's short he, he is going through there and he and i don't whatever i did he did not like he um i don't know if it was whenever i just said what did he want or i don't know if it was putting a gun back on him again i don't something upset him he's going through the woods but he's going further north he's he, he's on the west side of the power lines in the woods going north I, every now and then i can see like a piece of his shoulder a piece of his head you know going through there and he is just raving cane i mean he's yelling he, he he's this thing is very upset and by this time i'm standing up in my tree stand with my gun head on a swivel i'm like oh my yeah this thing yeah it's gonna kill me it's gonna kill me it's gonna kill me um I could, I could hear him moving north, and he's going, and he's going, 
he's yelling and he's screaming. And I want to say it was probably about the same area on the power line where he popped, where he was on the west side, but it was about where I seen him come out on the power line. He, he's probably about 150 yards down. He shot back across on my side. And that, that was so fast, man. It, it just looked like a, like a, like a black streak. It was that fast. Just boom. Wow. Now he's on my side and he's ripping, screaming. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, you have to get out of your tree stand. Now is the time, you know, and, and, but I'm hearing another voice saying, no, don't get, don't get out your tree stand. Not yet. It's not time, but I got to get down. I got to get to my truck. No, it's too dangerous. You know, I had like, it's like oh. two different consciences going, going on in my head. So, um, everything, finally, everything shuts up and I don't hear anything anymore. And I'm, 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 get, I'm, I'm very close to getting out of my tree stand. You know, I'm shaking. I said, this book bag can stay up here. I'm just going to take my gun. I'm going to sling it around on my back and I'm going to jack down and I'm going to run to my truck. I'm going to try, but, but I still couldn't do it for some reason. You know, I guess about two minutes passes and all of a sudden I hear this fresh tree break. I mean, it is loud. Really that, that, that snap crackle pop sure enough green. That, that was when I heard that, I, I figured it was him. So I said, okay, he's done got some distance on me. That's about 200 yards away. I'm getting out of my tree. I get down my tree. I hit the power lines. And it was like the minute I stepped on the power lines, I hear a roar behind me. It's like he knew I got out. I'm running down these power lines, and I'm looking back, and I'm running, and I'm looking back, and I can't see him. It doesn't seem like he's trying to pursue me. But, like, every 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a roar. So I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. And I wasn't in the best shape at the time. You know, I was a little bit more overweight back then. So after about 100 yards, I get whooped, you know, even though it's full, it's full adrenaline, but I'm, I'm whooped. I'm out of oxygen. So a very fast run goes to a very fast walk. And I'm walking, and this thing's still roaring back there. But, it, you know, I can tell I'm gaining some distance on it. So... I, I pick up my run again and I get whooped and I stop. And when I stopped, I heard something now about 30 feet on the side of me. I heard doo -doo on the side of me <laughs> and I'm like, okay, he made it to me that quick. He's fixing to kill me right now. Nope. He, he, he lights it back. He lights it back up back there again. I'm like, okay, th this is, this is probably some kind of game or this is a, pig or this is a deer that's doing the same thing i'm doing it's trying to get away from it so i start walking and this thing is matching me step for step i'm talking about i stop it stops but whenever i stop it takes it sure enough it takes that extra step didn't know didn't know about these things you know paralleling people at the time i didn't even i'm pretty sure i knew what it was when i seen it but i was i can't remember saying okay this is a sasquatch i was thinking this is some kind of people or some kind of monster I mean, I know what it was. You know, now I know what it was. So, yeah, this whatever, and, and he's still lighting it up back there. Like, he's not doing it as much. It's like every minute or so he's doing it now. You can hear him back there, and he's doing different. He's doing different hollers too. Like sometimes, some sometimes it sounds like a roar. Sometimes it sounds like a just a real, like a real loud screech. It's it's different. It's it's not the same roar every time. It was. It was Oh man, <laughs> oh, I get a little water. Oh, dry up here. The the screech that you were hearing. Have you ever heard? Is like yeah. any is is it bird like or is it like a human screech? Like is there anything you can compare it to? Almost like a uh, no, almost like a just like a like a woman screaming. Mm. Like a woman screaming. Wow. Yeah. Oh, God. Them them weren't them th them weren't as loud. They were th they were just more eerie sounded. Um. So, you know, I pick up the pace, and there's this place on this power line. It's just like a little weird growth. It's the halfway. It's I used to 
that I used to use that for a marker, you know, when I would be going to hunt that spot, I, you know, I'd always said, you know, it's like a little plateau because it, it comes out to about the middle of the power line and it stops and it just has like a few little pine tree saplings on it. When I went back this year, when I was talking to you about it, that, that was gone. Uh, they uh, when the power company could come in there, I think they bulldozed it down. But anyways, I used to use that for a marker. You know, I used to always say, "I'm either halfway to my truck or I'm halfway to my stand." Well, that was coming up, but it was still about a good 200 yards away. And for some silly reason, I felt I had to make it to that to that plateau. I had to make it there. I mean, I don't. There's nothing there that could have saved me or anything, but yeah. I had it in my mind. Not to get to my truck, just just make it to that plateau, and you're going to be fine. And I don't know why that 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 come. That, I don't know why that come about in my mind. That it was just make it to that plateau, and you're going to be okay. So I start running, and this this thing is just whatever this is on the side of me. It's matching me step for step. I mean, it was it was very very strange. It, but the way the woods are shaped, the woods goes in a little bit when, when you get to that plateau so you know when i get to this plateau this thing's gonna have to reveal itself or it's gonna have to go deeper in the woods or i'm gonna be able to spot and see what it is so i'm running i'm running it was so dramatic i mean this thing got so close to me where i can see i can i can see the bushes moving but i couldn't see it it was like weird and it it was just it was like all in one motion. I get, I get to the plateau. This thing is running out of woods. He's, he, he roars again. And I, I just had enough and I just cracked a shot in there. Just, just cracked one in the air. And it was loud. You know, that's a big gun I had. Um, whenever, whenever I shot in the air and, you know, I crossed the plateau and all that, everything stopped. Whatever this was on the side of me was not following me anymore. I never heard him again. I heard him one more time, but I didn't hear him until I got to my truck. I'll get to that part. So, you know, I, I get to the plateau. Mississippi, we don't have any mountains, but we do have hills. Mm -hmm. So there was this huge hill on the power line I had to crest. I get over the hill, I see my truck, and it's still way down there. Still a good 350 yards down there. I couldn't, I couldn't even see my truck. I could just see, like, the roof, the, the roof of my truck. I couldn't see the tires or nothing yet. But I, I'm like, there it is. I, I'm now in nautical twilight. The sun has done set. Oh gosh! But you know, it's it's you can still see, pretty decent. You know, enough to where I didn't need a flashlight. When I seen my truck, I caught another gear that I didn't know I had, and I, I was there in no time. Wow! And I can remember getting to my truck, you know, saying uh, to myself, you know, don't stick around, you know. Don't let curiosity get the best of you. Get in your truck and go. Yeah. I listened. Um, I get around to my truck, and it was like I stuck my key in my door to unlock it. And as soon as I twisted the key, I heard one more scream. And it was way, way, way back there. And it was way different. It was it was like a uh, – it was different. It wasn't like a woman screaming. It was like a, it was like a baboon screech. And at the end of it – at the end of the screech was like the crack of a whip, like, like almost a gun. Wow. I, don't know, I don't know. It was weird. It was like the crack of a whip at the end of it. Um, the road that I came in on has a cul-de-sac. It's, it's a very narrow road. It's like if somebody else is coming down the road, you basically got to get in a ditch to let the other person pass. It's one of them kind of roads, oh. you know, um, I usually, when I hunt, I always, I, 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 maybe I was just in a rush to get down there. I don't know. But you, I, I usually always back my truck out to where I'm facing going out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't do that. I was, I just parked on the side of the road and got out and got down the power lines. So I had a choice, either go down this road, go down about two miles, make the turn around and pass back through. I wasn't doing that. And it just it, it just got through raining like a few days before that, and so you know there was there was mud holes and stuff like that. And 
I backed my truck up in the ditch and I just about got stuck. There was a few times I was actually spinning and then I had to put it back in reverse and go back up the hill and try to go through it. Now, you know, juking, juking my truck to the right and then juking it to the left. Yeah, it was, it was dramatic, but I I finally got out and the bill of, you know, Leaf River is nothing but dirt roads. I mean, you have to drive probably about seven or eight miles before you can hit any kind of blacktop yeah so yeah i was i was hauling i was hauling butt man like every corner the back end of my truck was kicking around a few times i almost wrecked i finally catch highway 26 and i'm profusely sweating and it's in the 30s outside i got you know when i i was so hot in my truck i can remember rolling both of the windows down shirt off no, no, no shirt on at all profusely sweating freezing cold but i i wasn't cold I, you know i was i was in adrenaline you know mm-hmm. i just wanted to cool off and it was like i couldn't i couldn't cool off and i had i had that pedal down to the floor all the way home and you know i 26 and then i caught 15 back to the coast i get to biloxi and uh i live in a real you know i live in a neighborhood and you know there's no woods around my house just an ocean and i um i live in a neighborhood you know i got neighbors up the butt and everything i can remember pulling in i didn't even pull in the driveway i pulled i pulled in the yard like sideways it was ridiculous and it was dark outside it was probably about about in between 7 15 7 30 when i got home something like that and i can remember i i couldn't couldn't get out of my truck I couldn't get I couldn't get it out of my truck to go in my own house. Wow. And um I didn't know what to do. You know, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I um, I remember get, getting in the house and I I just took my gun and put it on the bed and I had a landline back then cuz I left my uh cell phone in my book bag. Oh. And I looked at my house phone, and I can remember hitting nine one, and I, I didn't want to hit the other one because I didn't know what I was going to say. I didn't know what to do. So I just hung the phone up, and I got in the shower, full blast cold, and laid in the fetal position for about an hour. And I can remember getting up, putting shorts on, and passing out on the couch. And I, I woke up. I must have had slept a long time because it was like noon when I woke up the next day. Um, I had a bunch of, um, I had an answering machine and all that back then. Uh, I had a bunch of mi- uh, missed calls from work. Where are you at? Where are you at? You okay? You know, stuff like that. And um, like, going on here you know i I I started thinking back i I thought i thought all that was a dream i thought every bit of that was i said what a what a what a terrible nightmare that was wow that was really vivid and i walked back in my room and i seen my gun laying on my bed i was like wow that happened so you know um reflecting back uh some of the features he was uh his arms are very long i can remember like not his fingertips like his wrist went to his knees very long arms um he was he was he was, he was jacked up pretty good um but one thing that sticks out is it seemed like his forearms were bigger than his biceps and he had like this Yelly suit looking hair coming off of his forearms. Yeah. Hair was black. Well, d- d- some people call it dark brown. It looked black to me. But it, but it was different. I mean, it looked, he was definitely black, but he had like uh, his hair, their, their, their hair are different. It's like uh, it, it, it's hair, but it, it, it had like, in some parts, it looked like it had like gray. T- tips on it a little bit 
very, very strange. And, and during this whole encounter, even him, you know, hauling butt on all fours, I can't remember seeing the feet. I mean, I knew he had feet, of course, but I just don't remember them. Yeah. You know, you call these things a Bigfoot, but I don't remember seeing the feet. Very strange. Um, I, it messed with me pretty bad. You know, people ask me, you know, I got hurt in the war over there and ended my army career from an IED blast. That was on my fourth tour. Um, people ask me what, you know, what was more scary being out there or what happened to you? They, by the way, that happened 16 years later after I got hurt. Um, both of them are scary. Um, but, you know, you have people with you in, in, in wartime and stuff. When, when, you're, when you're by yourself in vast wilderness, uh, I guess it's a little bit more scary because um, of the, the whole primal fear of it. It's, it's, it's you know, we're, we're, we're not taught to think, we're not taught to think outside the box. Right. We're, we're, we're you know, Anybody says something about a Sasquatch or a dog man or anything like that, you know, we're, we're, we're taught to believe all that's just make believe mm-hmm. until you see the boogeyman for real. Right. The, 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 the boogeyman's, the, the boogeyman is real. Yeah. For sure. Um, it, it affected me in a lot of ways. Sabella, um, I had a pretty good job at the time. And, you know, I, like I said, I didn't go to work. And, you know, they was calling, looking for me and stuff like that. And when I, I think I went to work one time after that. And I didn't even get in any, any trouble. I just told them, you know, I, I basically, well, I didn't tell them I seen a creature in the woods. I just told, told them I wasn't feeling good. And uh, it turned me into a hermit. It did. It, uh, I would only, like, go gro- grocery shopping during the day. At night, I, ke- I kept my house locked up. Couldn't sleep. The insomnia, the 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 the, the sleep deprivation was was really bad too. It, it was like I, I didn't want to go to sleep because I thought I was going to see him again. So I used to dream about it all up. You know, it, it it affected me in a lot of ways. You know, it 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 it, uh, it wedged out my relationship with my daughter for 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 about a year. You know, I didn't even. I, I never called her. I never did anything. I, I mean, that was selfish. But I was just, uh, I was afraid of ridicule. And I was, I, I didn't know who to turn to. How do I, who, who do I go to about this? Who, who do I go to and, and say that I've seen this eight foot gorilla walking on the power lines, but not really a gorilla? How, how, how do you tell people that? Yeah. Hard. I did a lot of read, you know. I, I finally started um, looking on YouTube about it. And uh, the first person that I reached out to was uh, Wes Germer. Mm-hmm. I reached out to him. Well, I just shot him an email. And I said, well, he probably he, he probably gets so many people that Send him stuff. He's he's probably not going to see my stuff, you know. But boy, was I wrong about that. Like I shot him the email, and I, and about three hours later, he called me. Good. And that that was hard. I, I'm I'm better now. I'm better now than than I was. Yeah. I'm a lot better now. Um. The first time I did a show, he had he had to um. He had to stop at least six or seven times, and I had to g- go back over because I, I would just break down. I'm, I'm getting better. I, I, I told my encounter on my show um, with Roger one time, and I, I broke down, but I'm getting a lot better. I don't know why. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I think the government knows about them. I think we're. I, th- I think that's being suppressed from us. Sure. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if it has to do with the logging industry or, or the state parks are going to lose money, or but I think they know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I think if, yeah, I think they also, I, I think also it, it would drive a wedge into religion too. Yeah, there's a lot of unanswered stuff out there. Yeah. And, you know, the funny thing about it is I always tell people uh, that would have been a dog man, I probably would have shot it. I, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. Not 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 a dog head. I, I couldn't have handled that. Yeah. <laughs> what what kind of gun did you have? I had a seven millimeter magnum, a Browning seven millimeter magnum, hundred and seventy five grain bullet. That's a that's, that's a that's what they used to like <laughs> that's a good gun. <laughs> that's what they used to hunt like elk and stuff. Yes. Yeah. But I uh I just use it because there's no track job. Yeah. Um, Down here, you know, the the, the deer down here are not, I mean, we we do have some big deer here, but, you know, I don't, I don't like to have to, to track something 300 yards in the woods. I, I, I want it to fall right there. Yeah. So, so you, you, you feel that it was more than one, obviously. And, I, you yeah. know, I, I guess you, I guess you can't help but wonder what would have happened had you, had you taken a shot at the one that was standing in front of you. Well, you know, I've had so many people try to decipher what happened to me. You know, um, I, this is this is what I this is what I have come up with. Um, you can take this with a huge grain of salt, or you can believe it, or. I think they were doing the same thing I was doing. Mm -hmm. I think they were hunting. I got there first. He didn't like it. And he was trying to show me who who, who the boss of the mountain was. And I I think for sure I was spared. For sure. If I, if I would have shot it, I think there's a possibility. I think the other one that was leading me out was another one. I don't know if that was the female. I don't know if that was a brother or just another small male or what. I don't, there could have been four or five around, you know, you don't know. Yeah. If I would have pulled the trigger and killed that thing, getting, getting out the woods, I, I could have got ripped to pieces. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I worked with uh, Michigan Rob and he, he saw a similar distortion in the Sasquatch that screamed at him and his girlfriend. Um, and you are the only other person that I know of that has had that distortion of the face, you know, where the mouth is massive and the, um, and you and I even talked about this a little bit. If you think that the, the, the infrasound, you know, coming from that roar also might've distorted the face a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that was a bad situation too. If, if I'm not mistaken, um, it was it was so strong it blew his girlfriend out the boat. Yes. <laughs> and he was like stunned. He couldn't even help her because yes. it was like he was like in a trance. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's crazy stuff. Yeah. So I had a I had something happen again last year. I mean, if you want me to talk about it, I will. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, the following hunting season after that, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get in the woods. There was like one time I went and I was in a shooting house and I had somebody with me and it was behind somebody's house. Yeah. No, it wasn't even in the woods. It was hunting a field. And when it started getting dark, you know, I had to make up an excuse like, my stomach's not feeling good. I, we we need to go. You know, I, I, I hadn't been feeling good the last couple of days. I had to make something up to get out of there. Cause, and he and he was so mad. You know, like man, this is like prime time. What are you talking about? I'm like, I'm just not feeling good. You know, I had to do that. I'd make an ass out of myself. And um, so that was the following hunting season. I, I couldn't even get in the woods. Like. I didn't even drive to the woods hardly. Like my daughter, my my daughter and her husband 
they lived out in the woods a little bit. And when I would go out there to see them, just seeing the woods, it was just like a cold bucket of water going over my head, you know, here we go again. Gosh. And, you know, whenever I was at their house, I was constantly pacing around and she's like, dad, sit down. What's wrong with you? You know, stuff like that. So last, uh, last hunting season, last year came up and I started getting better. I sure did. I was getting to where I can go out and start putting trail cams out again. You know, and uh, I was starting to get a little better. Um, both season, this was this was 2022. Both season come around, and uh, I went to a couple local spots, stayed to dark. Everything was fine. Didn't have nothing like that happen. Um, so my brother um, got into this. He got into this lease. It was in Mississippi, but it was it was it was. It was in Natchez. Have you ever heard of Natchez, Mississippi? Yes. Okay, it was right there on the Mississippi River. It was in Natchez, and um, it was like fourteen. It was like fourteen hundred acres, a lot, lot of, lot of uh, bottoms, a lot of swamp land, but really, real, really good deer hunting there. And um, you know, we went over there and we scouted it, and we we we, we put some trail cams in, and we started getting you know some good pictures, you know. Usually every year we start putting trail cams out, you know, early September. It's still pretty hot outside. You have to wear like chaps, snake chaps. You know, it gets a lot of rattlesnakes and a lot of cottonmouth, mm. copperheads too. Um, we put we put these trail cams out and, you know, we started getting some nice, some really nice deer in there. So we went back in there and hung some stands and, uh, Put some feeders in there and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we planned it out because, you know, this is like, this is like two and a half hour ride from, you know, from Biloxi. And you, 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 when you hunt up there, you have to, you, you have to plan it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we, we, it was a weekend and, uh, we was going to, this was, I'm not too, familiar with the date Sabella, but I know it was in between October the 15th and probably the 22nd. It was in some, it was in between there. Um, we was going to go up there and uh, hunt for two days, get a hotel room, hunt for two days, then come home. So as Murphy, as Murphy's law would have it, my little brother can't go. And I'm getting all these killer pictures of these, you know, nice bucks and stuff. I'm saying, God, man, I really don't want to go by myself. But, uh, and I couldn't bring anybody, you know, the, the lease that we was on, you know, there, were the, there was other people in the lease that's not related to us. So we couldn't just bring who we wanted in there, you know, mm-hmm. it was one of them kind of things. So I made the decision to go by myself. And I went and uh, very first day, um, I drove up there. I remember I ate some lunch. I wanted to get there earlier, but I couldn't. So I was just going to hunt that evening and then hunt all day the next day and then come home. And uh, the spot that I was at was a lot closer to the, to my truck, too. That's what I liked about it. Um, it, was, it was just an old logging road, and you pull all the way down to the end. Of the, this logging road goes forever. It goes forever. And... Um, you know, you get to the end of it, and then there's this huge, there, there, there's a huge bottom. That's the bottom I was hunting in, and then right past that bottom was the levee for the Mississippi River. Oh. So I get out of my truck. I got my bow stuff with me. I got a pistol in my bag. And I started carrying a pistol. Even though it's archery season, I'm still carrying a handgun. They, 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 they you know, I think everybody has a right to, you know, unless you're a felon or something like that, you should be able to carry something to protect yourself with. I don't care if it's archery season. As long as you're not hunting with it, that's just my take on it. Um, I got out my truck, and there was this huge hill that I had to go down to get to this bottom. And, um, like, steep, steep. Like, not straight up and down like a 12-12 pitch, but, you know, it was pretty steep. 
like so steep I had to like slide down on my butt to get down this hill, you know, grabbing onto like trees to get down. I get into this bottom, I find my tree stand, I get up my tree stand. It's early, it's probably two o'clock. And uh, I can remember getting up the tree, same kind of tree, pine tree, get up in the bottom. And I get up, I always get up super high, like 30 foot. I get I get so high that usually I I wear a safety harness in case something happens and I don't fall straight to the ground. My my first encounter I was not wearing a harness and I was still up that high, but this time I had one on. I get up, man, and it's just beautiful when I get up there, man. I can see that I can see the whole bottom. I can see I can see the levee back there. I mean, it's just gorgeous. I get up there and um, sit down and, you know, um, deer feeder's right there. I'm, you know, I, there's no gun. Um, this, this is archery. I got a crossbow is what I got. And, um, and I, you know, hung my book bag up and got comfortable. Same thing. Same thing. No action. No nothing. Not, 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 a, not a bird in a tree. Mm. Not a squirrel on the ground. And I'm in a bottom now where there's a bunch of, you know, a lot of litter on the ground, you know, a lot of broken branches and, you know, just walking in there. There's no way you can be quiet. There's just no way. Yeah. Acorns everywhere. Persimmon trees everywhere. It's beautiful. And it, it was just no action, no nothing. And I have the, you know, we have the trail cams to where when it takes a picture, it shoot it it it, shoot, it it texts you the picture back to your phone, and I always use video, and you know where I can play the video, and it goes and you know, yeah. And like, I was getting all these videos of these deer during the middle of the day, you know, eating and running around, playing around, and just I get there and there's nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm I'm, I'm not thinking anything. Out the ordinary, I'm not, more like yeah, that's my luck, you know, kind of thing. But it was just quiet, man. It was really, really quiet. Not nothing, nothing. Um, I stayed up there for a long time, man. It got dark, and I finally get out of my, you know, I'm getting ready to get out of my tree. I lower my crossbow down to the ground, stand up, took my harness off, and went to start jacking down. I hear a tree knocking in front of me. I'm educated now. Ugh. Whap, 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 straight in front of me. And then right behind me, whap, 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 whap. Like, okay. So I just kind of froze. Then I hear a whistle. <whistles> Sound just like a, like a human whistle, but, but a little bit more sharper. Just a, I can't do it. You know, yeah. that kind of deal, but loud, like, like. But 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 more like loud, but like more sharp than that. And then straight behind me, I get an answer. I'm like, oh no no no, I'm not doing this again. Uh, re- reached to my book bag, I grab my pistol, I put it on the side of me, and I start going down the tree. I get and it's pitch black now. The only thing I have on is like a, like a little rinky dink light on on my ball cap that where I can see myself you know, just getting down. And once I get down, then I can reach my bag and grab my big light. I get down and like I jack all the way down the tree and I go to get out of my stand. And as soon as I put my foot down onto the ground that, you know, I crunched, the woods exploded. I had stuff running. Still to this day, I don't know if it was pigs or not, but I'll get to that. Um, the woods exploded. I had stuff running towards my truck. I had stuff running north, south, east, and west. Just the, the, the woods just exploded. Wow. So, you know, here, here, here we go again. So I'm trying to make my way out of there. I got my big light. I'm, I'm shining everywhere. I'm not getting any eye shine, no nothing. I can hear stuff running. Every time I, you know, I get like 50 yards Stuff I start running again, it, and it, it could have been pig. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to blame it all on Bigfoot. So I get around, you know, I'm looking on my phone. I'm looking on my X app. You know, I got that's what I use is the the Hunter X app to 
guide my way out the woods with the GPS. Yes. And I'm like, where do I turn to go up this hill? You know, and I finally see where I went in. I said, okay. As soon as I made that sharp, that sharp left to start crossing that hill, so I, I get like a, a real loud grunt in front of me. Like, a, I mean, very close, like 20, 30 steps in front of me. It grunts and takes off. I emptied my whole magazine, the, the whole thing. Emptied the whole magazine. I reached in my bag, put another magazine in. I I feel bad about that because that's not very responsible. It was just it was just a panic and the fear. Yeah. That's not very responsible. Where I was at, I looked at it on Google Earth. There's nothing there for miles. There's no there, there's no type of civilization. No, nothing. There's nothing there. And whenever I drove in there, there's a, there's a gate that you have to you know to keep. You have to have the key to the fence to get in. There was right. nobody in there hunting, no nothing. But anyways, I make my way up the hill, and I finally get up the hill, and I'm 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 struggling this hill. You know, I keep sliding back down and climbing back up and sliding back down. My shoes are not gripping right. I finally get back up the hill. The road is probably about 30 yards in front of me. As soon as I get to the hill, same thing to the right of me, a loud grunt, and it hauls butt. Emptied my other magazine, shot into nothing, didn't know what it was. Very, very, very irresponsible. I finally, I, I, had, I had three clips. I put the last magazine in. I go to my truck. Side of the road here, you're, you, you're going to tumble. You, you're going to tumble and you're, you're probably going to die. Oh, dang. Um, I get out of there. I get to the fence. And, you know, you have to lock the fence behind you. And I'm like, oh, God, i got to get out my truck. So I get out my truck, unlock the fence, drive drive through, lock it back. I didn't even stay. You know, I was supposed to hunt the next day. I went I went all the way home. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be able to go back in there. So reflecting back on this, I can't say for sure because I did not have a visual that it was Bigfoot. It could have been pigs. It could have been deer. I just don't know pigs that beat on trees and whistle. No. Nope. Nope. <laughs> and, you know, people have told me that um, once you've seen one of these things face to face, that that you could be marked. Yes. And we're talking about, we're talking about about 150 miles west of my first encounter spot. So, I mean, I can't do the math. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so how do you... Can't do you the know, math. You told me you went hunting this morning. So how do you... I don't, I don't know how you do it, honestly. I don't know that I could get back in the woods. But I'm... I mean, I'm proud of you that you do that. And I think you probably have to, right? Yeah. Um, I went this morning... I went a couple times this year, mostly evening hunts, but um, I don't know, man. It's just, I, I guess it's just, I don't, I don't want them, I, I, I don't want the fear to win. Right. You know, um, and even when I went back last year, you know, I had it in my mind be, before that happened. I was like, okay, you know, that happens to me, you know, in 2020, but it doesn't have to be at the end of the world. There's probably... That, you know, you'll probably never see nothing like that again. You were just wrong place at the wrong time. Right. You know, but I don't know. You know, I did. I, I can't. But, and I did go this morning. The first time I did a morning hunt in a long time. You know, you know um, going through the woods when it's pitch black. I Well, I had the woods pretty lit up. I got a huge, huge flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> um this morning, the, the the fear this morning was getting up the tree. That was okay, getting settled, but you're just praying for that sun to get come up. There's something about the dark. Yes. That we were talking about earlier. Yes, it, it there you're is. Praying for the sun to come up. But I mean, if it's gonna if if it's gonna happen to you, I mean, I get I reckon it's gonna happen to you because mine happened. When you know it was still daylight, yeah. you know the first one, the, the bad yeah. one. 
I guess if I had any advice to tell anybody, if they ever encounter one of these things is, um, don't engage them. Don't do that. They don't like that. Let them walk through. I mean, if you have to, if you have to defend your life, defend your life, but don't provoke them. Don't, don't do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and they're not a very big fan of you. Uh, I did because I mean, he was basically in my face, but, um, it seemed like reflecting back that they're not a big big fan of you, like looking at them dead in the eyes either. They're not a big fan of it. Yeah. Whenever I would look at him every now and then I would, you know, I would look up over my scope to look at him and it was like, he didn't like that. He didn't like that. There was so much that happened in a short amount of time. And to be honest with you, a lot of stuff has come back to me. Like whenever I first told my story to Wes, I mean, yeah, it's the same story, but um, the details have definitely gotten better because it's come back. Yeah. You know, in a traumatic experience like that, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that, you know, that stays uh, suppressed in your mind until, you know, you think about it. That's why everybody there, there, there's people that's been want, wanting me to do the the whole regression thing. Mm-hmm. I think even uh, that last Halloween I didn't participate because I just couldn't. But um, I think um, yeah, D- Doug Hotchak he was gonna take a, a few people that's had encounters mm-hmm. and have him on have him on the show and pay for them to get regressed. Yes, he's still doing that. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember. I had to fly somewhere. I can't remember where. Where it was Midwest somewhere. Minneapolis. Actually, I was supposed to do a show with Doug yesterday, but I, I had too much going on. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, how long was it after your experience that you finally? Tell someone it was Wes the first person, and how much time passed? About let's see, that happened in December, and I went on Wes's show. I want to say that was oh man, and it was a, probably about probably close to about ten months. Wow. Do you think if about ten months? Do you think if you'd been able to talk to someone before then, it would have helped you? I don't know, because I, there was a few times that I did want to reach out to people er, earlier, and I just, I, I don't think it would have helped me because I, I was just too, I, I was just too afraid of ridicule and stuff, and, and you know, in the earlier times. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that that's, What's true. And I know you created a YouTube channel so that other people could tell their stories and get it off their chest and, and, you know, find a community as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. um, Yeah. There's a whole story behind that too. So after I um, did my show with Wes, Wes contacted me again, and he asked he asked me if I knew who Carrie Arnold was, and I said no, I, I don't know who that is. And he says, well, he said he's got his own show, and um, he's he's not very far from you. He said he, he lives in Mississippi, and he's not he wasn't he was in Lumberton. He's probably a, about an hour from me, and um, I linked up with him and did a show with him, and uh, I, I became pretty good friends with him, you know. Um, he would, I had his personal phone number and, you know, he told me if things get bad, just give him a call, you know, because he, he had something similar happen to him. And, uh, yeah, he had a bad, he had a bad experience too. But, um, you know, after I started talking to Carrie for a while, he says, man, he says, you know what? He says, you, you should, you should do your own show. Mm-hmm. He says, I've been doing it for a while. He says, I'm not really doing encounters anymore. I'm, I'm getting back into like research and stuff like that. He says, but that would be perfect for you. You know, he says, you know, you seem very passionate about it. And, you know, you care about how other people 
feel after you know they've had something like that happen to them and and i had a guy um a couple about two months ago named leland that came on and he he was so uh, i didn't think he was going to come on my show man i I would call him and he would just be bawling his eyes out on the phone Mm. and i said man i'm telling you once you tell it and get it off your chest it's going to be better and it, it, it took him a while but he finally came on and when he turned it loose yeah he got upset pretty bad but um he still he still contacts me. He says, "Man, he says I'm so much better now." Oh, good. That I've told that I've told people. Yeah. So you know, if I could be that stepping stone for somebody, I you know I don't mind it at all. I always run my banner on you know on my show. If you've had an experience, here's my email. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, it's. I used to do a lot of shows. Um, I used to do like sometimes two or three shows a week it's just it's 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 slowed down a little bit just mostly because of me and work but um everything's better now i mean it's a lot better i think i think the i I think the the grandchild had a lot to do with that yeah (laughs) you know what i mean yes it puts things in perspective yeah he's still so little too i think i don't think he's going to be like a very tall person he's a he's a little he's a little boy (laughs) he's a little munchkin (laughs) do you see yourself um doing research i mean do you think that you'll go out into the woods and seek these beings out i think i'm gonna finally get my feet wet when we do the meet when we do the meet and greet at um lbl which is april the 5th and the 6th yeah I think I'm going to do a little bit there, but I'm going to be with a, I mean, there's probably going to be a lot of people out there, a lot of contamination. So yeah, kind of got to walk for that, you know, Yeah. people walking, people walking out there making fake tracks and stuff like that. Oh yeah. You know, I hope not. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times I'll see in the comments, you know, people will say, Oh, I want to see one of these things. And I, I always think, <laughs> <laughs> I always think, you know, not really. I mean, how, what would you say to someone who says, I really want to have that experience and you're so lucky? Like they don't get it, but. I would tell them, think again. That's a, I would tell them, I would tell them that um, if, if, if you really enjoy being in the woods, especially like if you're a hunter and stuff, that's a, you might want to retract that statement because um, it's going to suppress you from doing what you love in the woods because you're, it's always going to be on your mind, especially when you're alone. I would, I'd have to tell them, good luck with that. Yeah. I mean, I, people think I'm psycho for going back in the woods now, but I mean, just it's more like a, more just like conquering the fear. Yes. Yes. And you have to. I mean, I think I think you have to or or it overcomes you and it changes who you are. And Yeah, definitely it, it definitely changed the way I look at the world as far as like um not just Bigfoot but just some of the stuff that's being kept from us. Yeah. I've um I've always um believed in um UFOs and aliens though. I've always believed that. I just and that just has to do with, 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 I mean, come on. I mean, we're one speck and we're a ton. Our universe that, that contains our planets is just like one little tiny speck in the Milky Way, which is one galaxy of billions. Right. How did we get so lucky? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's absurd. <laughs> it's more like common sense. I know. I totally agree. I, th- I, I think um, I believe. I believe. I believe that the government knows about that for sure, and I think that they've always been around. I, 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 throughout our human history, they've been here. I, yeah. I, I believe that. Do you feel like these beings have also always been around? The Sasquatch. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think they're ancient. I think that, that, that I think that they've been around possibly as long as we have been around or maybe longer. Um, they had a show the other night. It was, it was beast TV. Uh, uh, you know, they, they was trying to, you know, they was asking people, you know, what do we think they are? Um, I think that they're definitely a, they can be a human, they're, they're a human hybrid of some sort. I don't, I don't know if they're um, Nephilim and all that. I don't know. I mean, if you think, if you go back to the biblical times, you know, um, Gen- and you know Genesis six, especially where it talks about you know the sons of man uh, took took the daughters of men as wives, and you know they 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 were angels. They were an- they, they, they were bad. they were the angels that got kicked out of heaven. But you know they didn't lose none of their powers. You know, um, did that explain some of the you know the the, the woo techniques that these things do? You know, yes. as far as like cloaking and stuff like that, is that is that because of nephilim blood? I don't know. Yes, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there, there's some. You know, I, I'm not saying that they're nephilim at all. I'm, yeah, I'm saying I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they're nephilim. I don't know if they're just. Um, a human hybrid of some sort that's just an ancient being that just lives in the woods and it's good at what it does is because that's where it lives you know i don't know yeah it's been a it's been it's been a it's been a wild ride man you know dealing with this um and another thing i want to point out too is whenever i got into this community man um i've met some of the greatest people i've ever met in my life I have really, you being one of them. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I talk to you on the phone. Well, I, I, I text you a lot just about just everyday life. Sometimes we don't even talk about this at all. Just regular life. Yes. Yes. Such a good, you're such a great person. Well, thank you. Uh, I like trust you with my life. <laughs> well, thank you. I feel the same way, Mike. Yeah. You're a friend yeah, of mine. There's a lot of great people out there, man. I've met so many. Um, you and uh, Roger, for sure. And um, there's a bunch of great people out there. Um, Vic, Vic Cundiff's a really good guy, too. Really like Vic. Long Island Mike. He's another one. <laughs> Mikey Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's great. Yeah. Is there is there anything else you'd like to share uh, with folks? Um, at this time, not really. I think we covered most of it. Okay. Um, what 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 do you think they are? <laughs> I'm kind of uh like you. I think they're, I think they are ancient. I think they're a human hybrid. I don't know that they're from here. I'm not sure that we're from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes you think, you know, that human beings, um, you know, uh, I don't want to rattle re- religion around too much, you know, yeah. but, you know, who, who's to say, we, 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 you know, human beings were not imported. Yeah, yeah. It's all now. Burning, it's the burning question. Yeah. I try to keep, I try to, I mean, I try to keep my faith real, but, you know, it's challenging at times. Yes, it is. Well, I, I, uh, ever since I was a little kid, I didn't think I was from here. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. Yeah. I used to look up into the stars and, um, ask them to come get me because this wasn't home. And that's kind of a weird thing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Someone, yeah. s- someone in my comments uh, on my last video said that I was a alien hybrid. <laughs> they saw it in my eyes. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, so I started laughing because I, I've looked at myself on YouTube a couple of times and said, no, you, I look like an alien. I think I said that to my son even. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. I don't think you look like an alien. <laughs> 
I think you, I think you look like a beautiful lady. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh, thank you. People can find you at Red Creek Mafia. Red Creek Mafia 777. Okay. The 777 is biblical. Awesome. So if anybody um if anybody is has had an encounter and they would feel comfortable speaking to a man, like a man's man, which because that's that's what you are. You're a man's man about their encounter and know that they're not going to be laughed at or humiliated Ridicule. in any way. Laughed yes. At. Yes, that to reach out to you or to me, of course, and that we're going to take care of people. I do most of my stuff live, but, um, you know, before I do a show, when I have somebody come on it, you know, I think it's going to, I, I, I will protect my guests and my moderators will protect them too from anybody in the chat. So, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got some good mods out there. Yeah. Well, Nobody, you, you got a blue, you got a blue red, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but you know, nobody should have to go through an experience, um, like you did and feel alone for such a long time and unable to communicate what you saw. I just, it, I hate that you had to suffer like that, Mike. Yeah, um, I appreciate that, but you know, it's just, just gotta, just gotta deal with it, you know. You deal with it the best way you can. Yeah. Do you think there's some higher purpose? Do you think you were supposed to see this? Higher purpose? Yeah, you know, I've thought about that too. You know, I've, I've always wondered, you know, was that a test from God? Um, I'm definitely glad I didn't, I'm, I'm glad I didn't shoot it. Because that was, that was heavy, heavy on my mind. Yeah. But it wasn't, it was, it was, it was more like at that burning moment when I had to make that choice. It, it wasn't like, okay, I'm just going to shoot this thing and I'm going to leave and it's going to be rock and roll awesome. I killed a Bigfoot. No, it wasn't nothing like that. It was more like, do I, man, do I really have to do this? You know, kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, and, and another thing that, that, that I can't seem to get out of my mind is – when this was all was going on, I can't remember if I was like, okay, this is a, this is one of them Bigfoot things. I don't remember that. I just remember being scared to death. More like, what is this? Or, or what kind of person is this? I've I've never seen a person like this before. Wow. Is this is this a like a feral human or something? But just it was, and another thing, the the, the size of these things is just it, it makes no sense. But like, you know, I tell people eight foot. Oh yeah, probably three or four hundred pounds. No, more like nine or twelve hundred pounds. God, they're bit they're they're very big, very big. I don't I don't know where they get, and he didn't look like he he wasn't like. He, he he looked to be healthy. He he didn't look like he was um, depleted or anything like that. And I'm just thinking to myself, okay, yeah, there's some deer and hogs in here, but I mean, if there's two or three or more of these things, where are they getting the calories? There's not a lot of you know that that particular. There's not a whole lot of berries and stuff in the, in yeah. that area. It, it would have to be a a 100 percent, you know carnivore diet i mean there's a river there you know if they're getting fish too but yeah it, it just where are they getting the calories wow it's it's very strange it's uh you know i can i i can see like the pacific northwest you know when you know when when there's millions of salmon coming up the stream and stuff like that but we're talking about south mississippi which are there's nothing yeah like if you had to if you had to survive in them woods you, you you would starve to death unless you just ate only meat. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about a normal person. There's nothing yeah. edible on the trees or anything like that. When you get to like the central part of the state, you know, you got like wild persimmon and stuff like that. But down here, it, it, it's it's all meat or, the, or they're robbing somebody's farm 
or something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's something. Wow. Uh, I've thought I've thought about everything. I've thought about everything there is to think about when it comes to these things. And that's, you know, people ask me, are you more of a flesh and blood person? Are you more on, you know, the paranormal woo side? Well, for sure they're flesh and blood because, you know, they make tracks. What I was looking at was not an illusion. It was, it was a, it was a living being. Right. So yeah, they, they are flesh and blood, but is there something more to these things? I think so. You know, I think, I, I think, I think, I think they're very in in tune to nature. Like, you know, when it was on the side of me and it was breathing and then it just quit and it just got away. I couldn't hear, uh, you know, it popped. Then it pops out 150 yards down a power line. I didn't hear it going through the woods after that. They're very stealthy. Well, and how does it do that? Um, how does it, how does it go from, brush pop and a lot of you know you can tell something heavy is behind you to zero sound at all like how does it do that and another thing another thing yeah it was thick but if he was walking on two legs his head would have stuck up over them bushes was he belly crawling Oof. i don't know Oof, did he scary. know i was there the whole time is my theory wrong he knew i was there you know, it, it's just, it's it's so much to it. And, you know, um, you know, you, you, you find, you, you find foot tracks out in the middle of field and snow and it just stops in the middle. What's up with that? No. <laughs> you mean to tell me he's walking backwards just to show them tracks? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. You know, uh, I've seen a few, uh, quite convincing cloaking videos before. I mean, there's not a lot out there, but there's, there's two that I know of that's pretty, yeah. pretty convincing. Yeah, me too. And I've seen Ro some. Um, Ro 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 uh, Robin Haynes, she, she's got, she sent me a picture of one cloaking on the side of a pine tree that's, I still, I'll, I'll never get rid of that picture. And the, very, very, it's a very, very good picture. I think I've sent it to you before. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's something, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> where, 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 now, I know that you used to do a lot of research and stuff like that. Um, mostly Bigfoot stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Where, where are you at with all these other, um, cryptids? Uh, like, do I believe people are seeing them? Or is that... Oh, absolutely. I believe people are seeing all sorts of things. It's, it's like... Um, yeah. And it seems to be... I guess the question I have is, are these things showing themselves to people more? Or is it that people are, you know, finding a voice and finding platforms, you know, where they can speak about what they've witnessed. So are we having more and more sightings yes. or, you know, I, or just are people, you know, feeling more comfortable to come forward and say, you know, and share their experiences. And, and if that's true, I'm, I'm glad that because I hate the, I just hate the thought of people having to suffer like you did um, with something that's not supposed to be there, but clearly is and, and can have such a, incredible impact on your life i mean look at how your experience impacted your life i mean it changed your life yeah that's true um an another thing that i forgot to point out is they've always been around i just didn't know what it was um i definitely remember definitely remember hearing whoops Really? All the time. Um, usually, I would hear hear stuff like that either right when the sun was coming up or right as the sun's going down. In multiple areas, of, I've heard that. And I've always pawned that off. That's some kind of nocturnal bird or, you know. Wow. 
Um, the tree breaks I've heard, I've always thought that was just like a, like a squirrel or, or a raccoon in a tree. He's on the maybe on the wrong limb and, it, and it's popping and breaking. Um, yeah. I've heard um, beating on trees. I've heard that my whole life, my whole life. Okay. No and I've always thought that was either another hunter. Or maybe I'm closer to somebody's property than I think I am. Always, and, and, you know, I never thought anything out of the ordinary with that. Um, there was one particular, there's two particular times. I'm going to point this out. Um, same kind of area. I was I was hunting on somebody's land one time. I was in a shoot house. And this was middle of the week. Nobody out there. Middle of nowhere swamp land hunting in a shooting house and right whenever i got out of my tree stand walking back to my truck i heard what seemed to be a baby crying mm. like a newborn baby cry oh. in that swamp <gasps> heard that and there was another time i was in a shooting house i wasn't on a tree i was in a shooting house and i was hunting this I was hunting this field, nobody around. And if it was people, it was definitely the wrong direction. It sounded like kids out there playing, but it was so far away where I couldn't hear what it was. It was just, it was just, da, 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 you know, kind of thing, but way off. And I'm like, I, I even walked over there and I'm, you know, looking for these kids and, Nothing, you know, when I get over there. How'd that happen? I just yeah. not just kind of scratch my head. I'm, well, maybe I'm just hearing things. You know? Yeah, yeah. This was this was years this was years before my encounter, and I'm I'm going to tell you one last thing. So, I was I was hunting this buck one time. Um, he was a, I had him on trail cam. This was another property we was hunting. He was a nice little six point when I first seen him. You know, I could have killed him that year. I did. I didn't want to kill him. I wanted him to get bigger. So the next year, he was like a decent little basket rack eight point. Uh, I, I I could only get him on trail cam. I, I never would see him when I was hunting. Most of the time, I'd see him at night. And then the very ne next year. He was a stud. He he was a nice big nine big nine point. I said, you know, I said that's your butt this year. You know, I started getting him real early when he still had velvet on his horns, and uh, I spent a lot of money on this deer, like trying to kill his deer, and um, especially like on feed and stuff like that. And he was coming out a lot, but he was he was mostly coming coming in like right at dark still in legal shooting hours and he was coming out a lot and i said you know what i'm gonna kill i'm i'm gonna kill this deer so i waited for the perfect day perfect wind nothing can get in the way of me killing this deer he's still coming in right at dark so i'm gonna kill this deer so i get to the spot i get up my tree and i'm not up there 30 minutes i hear something i i, I hear something uh, crunching on corn. I look up, I see his horns. I, I said, he's only about 70 yards away. I said, oh, you, yeah, you're dead. I put the gun on him, Sibylla. I look to the scope. I squeeze the trigger. I, I watch this deer fall and, and kick himself limp, dead. Eyes open, everything. I get on the telephone, on the cell phone, and I called my brother. I said, I got him. He, 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 I'm looking at him right now. He's dead. I said, I didn't have a deer cart. I said, I need you to come in here and help me, you know, drag him out. Because, you know, I had a pretty good ways to my truck. This was 10 years before. This was, this was like, this was like 2010 when this happened. So my little brother gets there. I get down my tree. And I walk over there. He's gone. Gone gone he's got one there's one big pile of blood where he sat there and died and 
my little brother said, well, he ran off. I said, no, he didn't run off. I said, I watched him die. I watched him kick himself limp. I said, before I got out of my tree, I looked over there and he was sitting there dead, dead as a doornail. We walked over there. We called like three or four more people. We combed the area and there was no blood leaving that spot anywhere around. It was like somebody took this deer, wrapped it up in in plastic and carried it out. There was one big gigantic puddle of blood from his heart and that was it. Wow. What's the death? I don't think so. I think I, th- I think one. Of, I, th- I think there was one there, and, and, and it took it. Yep. Wow. And I've heard that. I mean, I can't be for sure because I didn't see anything, but I don't know. Wow. Wow. That's that's impressive, though. <laughs> yeah. He would have had to. He, he would have had to done it when I was getting down. When I, when I, I was jacking down the tree and not paying attention, facing the tree, and he would have had to done it quick. But I, I, I don't put it past it. Wow, wow, that's an incredible story. That's a that's a great place to end too. Thank you so much, Michael, for being on my show, and thank you for all the help with the artwork. Oh, no problem. <laughs>